Oh Japan, you consistently put out some of the weirdest, freakiest, scariest stuff no matter what the medium. Manga of course is no exception. Even the non-horror stuff finds a way to be pants soilingly terrifying from time to time. Demons and monsters and people with evil minds, there's always something spooky going on in our favorite right to left graphic novels, or is that left, right to left? whatever camera right is, and it's become quite popular recently too, with plenty of adaptations in t-shirts and omnibuses being pumped out regularly. So with the recent mainstream resurgence of horror manga love, there's no better time to celebrate some of the genre's greatest achievements. Hello horror heads, and welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. I'm your horror host, Keegan Hughes, and today we're taking a look at the top 5 scariest horror manga you need to read. Take a deep breath, and prepare your mind for some previously unimagined images, because we're about to see some stuff. Before we get started, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more manga madness. Wicked, let's get going. Coming in at number 5, we have Dark Beast Anamorphosis. Definitely not for the weak of heart, although none of these really are. This is a pretty hardcore piece of gory, erotic body horror. Made by Kago Shintaro, who is widely known for his Eroguro style, Dark Beast Anamorphosis is a short volume of horror stories. I actually first found out out who the artist was when he did all the art for Flying Lotus's You're Dead back in 2015. If you like his style, definitely check out the promo music videos and the album art for that. You won't be disappointed. So refocusing on the manga, this is a 10 chapter volume of nasty, grotesque, incredibly detailed horror. Shintaru is definitely a modern master of unsettling art. The first half of the volume focuses on one story where a group of strangers are invited onto a supposedly haunted set to perform some tests of courage. And by supposedly haunted, I mean Definitely haunted. An actor had died tragically on set and left behind a terrifying evil presence. The actor died while wearing a big monster rubber suit and therefore this presence manifests in that costume. Kind of like Phoenix Man, but creepier. What begins as a sort of Scooby Doo mystery quickly devolves into sexual nudity, cannibalism, and extreme gore. Reader beware. The second half of this book is comprised of nine shorts, mostly erotic body horror. It's kind of Cronenbergian, if that makes sense for a manga. One story in particular focuses on a woman who ends up as a storage unit for people who don't want to forget certain things. After surgery, doctors accidentally leave a scalpel inside her, which quickly develops into people leaving their phones and homework and more inside of her body. Eventually, she takes her head and stuffs it in her own guts to escape it all. Uruburos, anyone? Dark Beast Anamorphosis is weird and creepy and hilarious, and I would definitely recommend it. It's just not for everyone. Coming in at number four, we have The Drifting Classroom. This one is a classic and was very influential when it came out. Most serialized in the 70s, The Drifting Classroom is your prototypical horror manga, giving way to many more in its wake. It was written and illustrated by Umezu Kazuo, who is well known for his other horror manga, as well as directing many films. We follow Sho, an elementary age student who gets in a bad fight with his mom one morning. He heads off to school after a screaming match, saying that he hopes to never see her again. Uh oh. Later that day, the entire school is mysteriously teleported into a post-apocalyptic wasteland, and it's up to the kids to survive. Sure, a couple teachers are teleported along with them, but they're pretty much immediately rendered useless. One of them goes on a killing spree and murders the rest of the teachers, and another barricades themselves in the cafeteria. This puts the kids in a Lord of the Flies situation, and of course, this doesn't work out too well. Kids can't really govern very well. The students do band together, and they manage to survive with some semblance of dignity, but it doesn't go well for everyone. Many die in horrifying situations, and others decide they don't want to abide by the group's rules. Good riddance. They learn that the school has actually been transported into the future, and that the world has basically been depopulated at this point. Food and water become scarce, and a deadly plague sweeps through the school. All of this sows further dissent amongst the students and pushes them towards madness. Thankfully, one of the students, Nishi, has the latent psychic abilities to allow her to communicate with Sho's mom in the past. Through this link, they are able to acquire supplies from the past and survive for longer. By the way, there are a bunch of terrifying mutants and a cult dedicated to worshipping a one-eyed god. The Drifting Classroom employs cosmic horror extremely effectively and has a stunningly effective way of portraying brutality among the cast of mainly children. It's well paced with a lot of memorable characters, which is surprising because of how many there are. And although it may be outdated by today's standards, it remains a chilling horror manga classic. Filling out our number 3 spot, I Am A Hero. It's like zombies, but different. I Am A Hero has been called Japan's answer to The Walking Dead, which is actually a pretty fair comparison. 
Edison. We follow Hideo Suzuki, a 35 year old man with a dead end manga assistant job. They always tend to insert themselves, don't they? He spends most of his time daydreaming and talking with himself and has a strained relationship with his supportive girlfriend. The only reason he's ready for a zombie apocalypse at all is his love of guns. He is an experienced gun enthusiast and owns a hunting shotgun, which is something that's actually pretty rare in Japan. So when the disease ZQN breaks out, he's at least a little bit ready. Hideo runs for his life and meets all sorts of strangers doing the same along the way. It follows a pretty standard outbreak story structure beginning with chaos, then the protagonist finding a safe haven, they chill for a bit, and then the safe haven gets ruined, and you repeat that, and so on and so forth. Describe these things as zombies so far, but that's not exactly true. They are zombie-like in the way that they are violent, homicidal, terrifying, and infectious, but they don't look like traditional zombies. Instead, these are terrifying, shambling, fleshy masses that can sometimes fuse together to make even larger, scarier monsters. They're pretty wicked, I'm not gonna lie. It's a very Japanese design too, taking the familiar human form and perverting it in expert ways. These freaks of nature feel no pain and therefore can continuously function at peak human strength. They love to run full tilt into folks to snag a quick nibble, effectively transforming those people into ZQN monsters as well. However, the zombies retain some of their human features, which can make them scarier, and sometimes even some of their memories. It makes for some formidable freaks and heightens the scare factor by multitudes. I Am A Hero was so popular it even got made into a live action film in 2015 and spawned three different spin-off manga about the outbreak in different areas. It really and truly is an alternative reality, Walking Dead. In at number two, Parasite. You like worms? Hmm. Well, parasites got worms, lots of them, and they'll creep into your brain through your nose. Sounds fun, right? This is an alien invasion story in which the aliens are worm-like parasites who want to take over human hosts by entering their brains. Think Invasion of the Body Snatchers, but with drill-headed phallic monstrosities. Our main character Shinichi wakes up as one of these aliens is attempting to take over his brain, which causes it to panic and burrow into his arm. His right arm, right? It then must coexist with this parasite living in his arm while using its powers to protect other humans from the invasive species. We got body horror, we got thriller, we got sci-fi. Three for three. This is basically a very gory shonen with horror elements included, which actually makes for a very gory fun time. It might not be the most suspenseful, but it's definitely gross and creepy in all the best ways. The monster design is top notch as well, and it's honestly worth checking it out for that alone. There are all sorts of gross out moments during fights between people and parasites, people and people, parasites parasites and parasites, it's all good stuff. There are also some moments that really crank up the uncomfortable meter to 10, like when two parasite controlled humans decide to have a baby together to see what will happen. Then they use the baby as collateral. Filth. This is another horror manga that got its fair share of adaptations, like two live action films and an anime series. It's not to be confused with the Korean live action film Parasite, although that is scary in its own way. And finally, at number one, Uzumaki. Who would have imagined that a manga by Junji Ito would top this list? I know, I'm so original, I'm so unpredictable, but seriously, he's earned his spot at the top of the horror manga world. This ex dental technician really knows his horror. He must have learned it while drilling down on people's teeth. Yuck. If you didn't know, Uzumaki means Spiral. The manga takes place in a town where everyone is becoming obsessed with these swirly symbols. The town is absolutely infested with them. They manifest everywhere, from blades of grass, to clouds, to pottery, to whirlpools. The folks living there start to become obsessed, starting small by constantly observing and fixating on the patterns and designs until they start to manifest physically in those people. The main character's dad actually twists himself into a grotesque human spiral and fits himself into a small tub. Looks kind of like a cinnamon roll with a face. Not as cute as you think. Other human spirals involve a girl's hair taking on a life of its own, a boy growing a spiraling snail shell, and a twisty scar boring into a woman's head. These are all rendered in beautiful, precise, terrifying art. Ito's style is stylized without becoming gaudy, and the body horror manifests on humans that look realistic to begin with. This does a lot to build up a very creepy mood. Spirals are used as a symbol of cosmic horror in Uzumaki. The humans in the story can't comprehend why they're so compelling, and there's no way to know the reason why they're causing people people to change in the way that they do. It's a great visualization of the unraveling mind. Ito actually wanted to make a story about strange changes that would occur to people living in very long, traditional Japanese terraced houses based on experiences of living in one as a child. Then he gained inspiration from the appearance of a mosquito coil and began to study spirals very closely. He would stare at them and research them and eat food with spiral patterns and drain water from his tub and raise snails, all to try and learn the secrets of the spiral. Kind of sounds like he was becoming one of the characters from his story. 
Soon there will be a new Toonami anime that should be coming out in 2020 and it will be in entirely black and white. That will be an absolute visual treat so go get ready for it. Go read the manga. I am excited. So that is the end of today's list. Spirals, zombies and rubber monster suits. All scary scary stuff. What did you think? Any entries you would change around? Are you going to read any of my suggestions? Let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more boorish ones from last time. Multi Killer Joe says, some sequels are horrible but some surpass the original. Alright folks, I'm about to say something very controversial. Are you ready? You sure? Okay. Shrek 2 is a superior Shrek. Yeah, I said it. And actually I think I do prefer the Evil Dead 2 to the first. I get that it's not like pure horror but I think it's hilarious. Crucify me in the comments. Tang Tang says, I ate a big bowl of magical beans. Did do you get them from a trusted source? The last person I knew that ate a big bowl of magical beans ascended to the spirit realm and they haven't returned since. Diane S says, Keegan, I have to know where you get that shirt. Wolves are my spirit animal. Diane, thrift stores are your friend. Lock the Fox says, Troll 2 should be used as a form of torture for war criminals. And I think that's definitely taking it too easy on them. Make them watch every troll movie, one through whatever number we got the title for, all at half speed and then we'll see what happens. Tracy Steele says, where the hell was Jaws 4 the worst sequel ever to such an amazing movie as Jaws? Honestly, I just can't count that high. Maybe someday I'll get past 3. And that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. By the way, there are a bunch of terrifying- that's wicked. <laughs> Ooh. Okay.